All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply. And in this video, we are going to put together our new uh, ladies clutch template. Um, this is by far, um, I'm not going to say the most complicated template we've done because the build is very simple, uh, following all the same rules and concepts that we've we've put forth in other uh, other templates. But it is uh, it is a very full design as far as everything that it has in it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the prototype one that I built. I gave it to my mother to to stuff all her stuff in and see what she thought of it. Um, so we'll just have to. Uh, show off the pictures of it in the thumbnails, thumbnails of the video once it's complete. Um, but anyway, the template set, I'm going to bring the camera down. You don't have to stare at me. You have to stare at my desk. All right. So the template set has four pieces. Um, here is the back of the wallet or the outside. Um, I've already cut one out because I did a tooling pattern that was provided to me by uh, Don Gonzalez. Um, he, uh, he drew us up a neat tooling pattern because this, this template is in the mystery box for December 2018. And uh, we included this, the, the drawn pattern for this so that other, other folks could tool it. Um, so anyway, so I've already cut out one of these. But um, this one right here says cut out two from two to three ounce. Now, there's a lot of leeway there. This thing in total with a liner can be up to, say, six ounces or so. Um, so you could cut one out of, say, four ounce and line it with two ounce. Um, you could cut it out of two pieces of two to three ounce. Um, however it is, you don't have to line it, um, but I'll show you later in the video where there's a sew line that's going to go across this that will show up on the outside, or you can do it from, if you, if you build it from the liner like we're going to, then that sew line will be, will be hidden on the, on the outside of the wallet. You won't see it. It'll all be part of the liner. So anyway, um, piece number two, this is a pocket piece. Uh, there will be two of these on the clutch. One will be right here, another one will be up here, and then both of them will actually have other things uh, around them. Um, there's a, a cutout right here. It says stitch line, do not cut out. When you, you need two of these, when you cut out one of them, you're gonna mark that line on the flesh side, the, the side that you don't see of the leather. Um, because you're going to sew it to another pocket, which we will discuss now. This is a zippered pocket, uh, much like if you watched our, our build video on the, uh, the biker uh, trucker wallet, much like that, but we changed a little something. Um, on that one, it folds completely in half, and then the zipper is on, on the top of that when it's folded in half. And... Um, I, I fear that that will prematurely uh, let the zipper um, fail or, or damage the zipper maybe. Um, so what we did on this one is when this is folded in half, the zipper will actually be on the side, on the outside of it. And this is the piece that will sew to this piece like that. You would sew these two together and then when you fold that shut and, and sew along the, the top seam here and then down the sides. Um, so anyway, that's all going to be explained as we do it in the video. And then on this wallet, we actually have 12 card slots, okay? Much like our Roper style wallet here, um, this thing right here, we're going to do six cards on one side, six cards on the other side. It will fold in half and sew down three sides of it. Now, the way to access that, you'll see when you fold it in half, you will see that... Let me silence that. I'm sorry. Actually, folks, I got to take that call. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry about that. Um, it's always important when uh, leather's on its way. So anyway, like I said, we're doing 12 cards on one side, 12 cards on the other side. When you fold this in half, you'll actually notice that there's an overhang on this side. And that's going to sew, imagine again, this is folded in half, and it will sew just to this part right here. So it'll actually bend out so that you can get to the cards that are on the back side. Um, I really do wish that I had the prototype one to show you, but I, I don't. So we're going to have to build this one, and then we'll see it at the end. Um, anyway, so we're going we're gonna to get to uh, get to building this. Um, one of the first things I'm going to do, since this got tooled, I have not trimmed it. So we're going to set the 
pattern template on it and kind of see where we're looking at. May not even need any trimming. I taped it down pretty good to, to tool it. Yeah, and it's just fine. Um, so yeah, first thing I'm going to do is glue this to its liner. Um, but I actually need to cut out the liner pretty exacting first because I want to use these two holes to put my snaps and I want to put snaps in that are hidden. I don't want the, the outside of the snap right here on this leaf and I don't want the inside of the snap um, showing inside the pocket that's going to be in here. So I want both of these glued in between the layers of, of the liner. Um, so one snap, uh, the, the base of it will be here. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. It's got to be on the outside of this tooling, but the other one will be on the inside and there won't be a big cap here on the outside. So I'm going to take my lining leather. This is some um, uh, uh, English bridal chestnut colored, um, two to three ounce. And I am going to, I thought it really matched this nice stain that I did on here. Um, the stain's kind of an experimental thing that we're playing with uh, here at Makers to possibly carry a new product line. Um, so far, I'm pretty impressed. That's a really nice stain. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to just kind of rough cut this out just a little bit oversize. And, um, and uh, we'll go ahead and put that snap piece in there, too. I'm just going to cut it about an eighth of an inch oversize as I go along. While I've got this piece out, I might as well go ahead and cut out my, uh, my other pieces right quick. Um, just like on my other, um, our other wallet templates and things like that, uh, we're not going to cut out this big square here. That's shown, um, that's there so that we can mark our, uh, our lines to do our credit card uh, pieces. And uh, we'll show that later in the video as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and I'll cut this out at just exactly the right size with the template. And again, that's why these templates are awesome is because unlike a paper pattern, you can just put your knife right up against it and give it a cut and you won't have to worry about damaging your pattern. Let's see if that got it all. Should have changed out my blade on my scalpel before I started, but I didn't. All right, so there's that piece. Okay, the zippered pocket, and then I need two of this pocket here. Just get rid of that. Sometimes it can be tricky to do around the uh, curves on these things, but just 
kind of tilt my knife back a little bit and go to town on it. It usually works. one more again. <laughs> the cool thing about how this one was designed, like I said, if you use the, the outside and liner piece each as two to three ounce, then that's the only weight that you need for this whole project. Everything is two to three ounce. So that kind of helps. Um, I will say if you're going to use tooling leather on the outside, it does take some finesse to tool on tool to two to three ounce, but it's easily done. Um, I've done it pretty often myself, and um, if you've watched any of my videos where I've talked about um, using uh, picture frame matting underneath your tooling, then you'll see how you can actually get some really nice depth on that two to three ounce leather um, that ordinarily you wouldn't if you were just doing it straight off the rock. All right, so there we are. And again, I'm going to take the back of one of these and I'm going to mark my little stitch line on there for when I go to sew it to the zippered pocket that it's going to be part of. So all I did is just turned it over to the flesh side and I just marked that little U shape there and that'll be a, a good sew line to use. Put my scrap over there in case I screw something up later and need to recut it. Um, all right, now this one, the zippered pocket, to finish cutting it out, that is a half inch wide gap right there. But if you use a half inch wide uh, punch, then I guarantee you, you're going to break your, um, your template. Uh, people call me all the time. They use too big of a hole punch in one of the holes and they, they broke it or cracked it. And I, I caution over and over again, when you've got a hole punch that you want to try to use with these holes, um, you need to take that hole punch and send it all the way through and make sure that it goes all the way through because due to the bevel of the, the shape of the, the hole punches, a lot of the time the very tip of it may fit in there, but when you go to, to, to hit it, it's not going to work. So give me a second, got to find my hole punches real quick. All right, I went over there and got my hole punch, and then I screwed up because I didn't show what I was doing on the daggum video. All right, so I got my template here, and what I did was I took a smaller hole punch, just the next size down from my half-inch one, okay? And I just put it right at the ends and in the center of this and kind of gave it a little twist so that it would mark where those holes are going to be. Then I pulled my template off so I don't break my template, and I went ahead and punched the holes, all right, and it did a pretty good job of uh, keeping them straight and lined up. Now I just have to go back with my scalpel and cut out the, uh, the space between. So just like this. And there's what we're left with. All right. So next we on this piece, the next thing we'll do is install the zipper. Now, um, on to the, uh, this piece right here. It's pretty difficult to do all these holes and all these lines without letting this template move, but you can do it. I know you can. I did it last time. So um, let me grab the right hole punch for that. 
And what I'll do is I'll just do one side at a time. So I'll do all these and then I'll do all these after, after I'm done with the first side. And that'll help me keep the template straight because then I can turn it around and keep my hand on the main part of the template. So I'm going to go along and I'm going to punch my holes. Again, I'm using the smallest hole punch I can. I'm just putting it right in the center here and, and giving it its hits. And that's going to help me keep it to where... Let's recenter that a little bit. It got a millimeter off there. Um, and that's going to ensure that I'm not breaking my template with this hole punch. Um, I know it's sounding redundant that I'm repeating this again, but I do have people call me and say, oh, well, I just grabbed a hole punch and, you know, you made it look so easy, so uh, I broke my template. Okay, no problem. I, I understand that, uh, you know, some people probably didn't notice the, the amount of bevel on their hole punch. So, anyway. All right, so there's six of them, and I'm going to go ahead and cut the lines in between. Um, these lines are made very, very thin on this template. Um, basically, a scalpel blade is pretty much the only blade that will comfortably fit in there. The reason we did that is because we don't want it to have any left and right play. We want it to be a, a straight line and not have any, any uh, wavering to it. All right, so one side's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around so that I can do the other side. Um, the reason I'm turning it around is because now... I'll line up, you know, what I did on the first side there. I'm turning it around because my hand here that's holding the punch needs to be on the template to hold it nice and still. If I was trying to do it down here, then my hand wouldn't be on the template anymore, and that wouldn't help. And once again, we're just going to cut those lines up. We're going to build this. We're going to do all of our prep work and putting in the zipper and all that stuff. And then it's all just going to be construction after that and sewing. Um, so that's what we're trying to get to here. All right, so I'm going to check and just make sure that all those lines are nice and cut open because um, it's going to be too late later to try to go back and cut them. So looks like we're good to go. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and I'll show you all how to do the, the card slots. Uh, it really is the same as the, as the say, the Roper wallet, um, except this one's going to be double-sided. Um, so if you've watched any of our videos before, you've already seen this part, you can skip ahead um, or you can watch for a refresher. But this square right here, what we have that for is we're going to line up one end of the, the, the rectangle on the, um, one of our cut lines. All right. And then we're going to take a pin. Again, this is the back side of the leather. Okay. The flesh side of the leather, not the nice finished smooth side, but the rough side. Okay. So we're going to take a pen and we're going to mark a line at the bottom of that rectangle. And we're going to do that with every single one of our card slots. Okay. Um, oh, and then I forgot, um, I should mention too, we're actually, we should do it off to the offset just a little bit because our layers of, of material are going to cover up these lines. So if we do it off to the side just a little bit, then that'll be easier for us to see. I should have mentioned that, and I'm sorry. These cuts are so fine sometimes that it's hard to see them from the back side. All 
And as with everything we do on these projects, the more careful we are, the more work we do to line up these holes perfectly and these lines perfectly, then the better our finished product will be. Um, I've said it a million times, tons of tiny little accurate details tend to lead up to a very, very nice finished product as opposed to you cut one corner, then you cut another corner, then you cut another corner. Next thing you know, you've just got a project full of cut corners. And that's not cool. All right, so we flipped it over, and now we're doing the same thing with the other side. What's really going to stink on this one is how much double-sided tape we're about to cut. We are going to need, I believe it is 26 pieces of double-sided tape to complete this whole thing. Because there will be one at the top and the bottom of each of the uh, card pockets. And there's six card pockets per side, so that equals 24. And then there's going to be one on each end to stop the... Uh, um, the material, the Tyvek that we're going to use up here at the very top. So I'm going to pause this, but what I'm going to do in the pause is I'm going to take and cut 26 pieces of double-sided tape that are all approximately the width of these, these lines right here. Okay, so here we go. All right, went ahead and grabbed, uh, or cut out my uh, 26 pieces of tape. They're all sitting over here on the desk. And I went ahead and grabbed my Tyvek. This is the uh, 2.25 inch wide Tyvek that we sell at Maker's Leather Supply. Uh, it comes on a 10 foot roll. Uh, and we're going to use approximately 38 to 40 inches per side of this. Um, for the video, I'm just going to do one side and then know that, you know, the other side's exactly the same. Just turn it over and do it again. So the first thing we're going to do is take a piece of double sided tape and put it directly below each of our cut lines. So that's going to use up six pieces right there. And then we're going to take another piece and put it directly above our bottom line that we drew on there, remembering that these lines are a little bit offset, so we need to center them on the holes, not center them on the line. Okay? And then we can go ahead, our very final piece of tape will be up here at the top between the top cut line and the very top of the wallet. Um, we can just put another piece anywhere up there. That'll be where our Tyvek stops. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five more pieces of tape sitting over here um, for this side, uh, but we're going to add them as we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we will remove the, uh, the backing off the tape on this very bottom cut line. Okay, not the drawn line, but the bottom cut line. And we're going to take our Tyvek, and we are going to lay it directly across, making sure it is very perpendicular to the cut lines so that it runs straight back and forth as we weave this back and back and forth to create our card pockets. So I laid it right across there and now what I'm going to do is pull it down even with that line and I'm going to create a crease in the in the material just like that. Now, once I've got that crease, I'll come down here, this very bottom piece of double-sided tape. I'm going to take the backing off of it. And I'll just lay it across it like that. Now, I am going to fold the Tyvek back up, and I want to make sure and fold it exactly even with that bottom line that I drew down there. Okay, and then I'll come up here, after I've made that crease, I'll come up here and I will take the tape off the very second cut line, second from the bottom. Okay, and all I'm going to do is lay this down. I want it nice and flat across here. I don't want a big bubble right here or anything like that, so I'm just going to nice and flat lay it across that tape. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna pull it back down. And once again, right even with that line or just a teeny, teeny bit below it, I'm going to create a crease or a fold. All right, now this is where drawing those lines came into play, uh, drawing them a little bit out to the side because they're all covered up by the Tyvek um, right now. Okay, so I can just see where right at the edge of those lines are. I've got that crease there, so that's fine. Um, but I'm gonna take my next piece of tape and I'm gonna put it right even or just above that second drawn line. Okay, and then I will remove the backing from it. And once again, lay my Tyvek down and across it. Okay, now I'm gonna pull the Tyvek back up. And um, I've, I've discussed this on other videos. You don't have to use Tyvek. I use it because it's so ridiculously thin. Um, and also it's not gonna, it's not gonna have a problem with moisture or um, uh, things like that. It's not gonna rot. It's, it's, it's a very good product to use inside these wallets. Um, but you can use ribbon or fabric or things like that. Um, okay, so I went and uh, pulled, the, pulled it even with that bottom line, created my crease there. Now I will remove the, the uh, backing from the double-sided tape on the third pocket up from the bottom. And once again, just lay it down. It. And now it's just repetition all the way to the end. Okay, I'm going to fold it back, create my crease. Take my tape. Lay it even or just above that drawn line, the next one up. Like that. I'll remove the backing from it. Lay the Tyvek back across. And I'll pull it back up. I'll crease it right even with the drawn line there. I'll remove my tape from the next card line up. This is now the third one from the top. Lay it nice and flat against there. Fold it back down, create my crease just under the uh, the cut line there. And like I said, it's just repetition. We're just, I mean, we could do a card, we could do a hundred cards, it doesn't matter. We'll just keep on a trucking with it. All right, now I've gotten where I didn't draw my line far enough out to the side here, so I gotta look for it. There it is, right there. All right, so I'm gonna remove the backing of the tape. Lay it down across it. Pull it back up even with the line. Second cut from the top, we're gonna remove the paper again. Pull it down again even with the, or just below the line. Create my crease, another piece of tape. Just above my drawn line. Lay it down, roll it up again. Now we're at our last cut line, our very top card pocket. We'll pull it back down again. All right, now on this last part here, I'm just gonna fold it back up even with the, the line like I always have. And then when I get up to this top top piece up here, it's above the cut line, but below the top of the wallet. I'll remove the tape off of it, lay it up there, and that, can, that completes the card pockets. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut it off. And I want it um, cut off short enough that it's not up there in the sew line um, there at the top of the wallet. And uh, yeah, that's it. Again, you're going to do the same thing on the other side, but I'm going to pause the video because I don't think you want to watch five more minutes of me doing it. 
All right, so while we were paused, I uh, I went ahead and did the other side of the card pockets here, and I also, whoop, FedEx man. All right, sorry about that. FedEx man came in. Um, so anyway, I, I did the other side of the card pockets here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to end up folding this thing in half. And when I say in half, I actually mean halfway between where the cards are. You're going to kind of split the line right there. And then again, you'll see this little overhang right here. We're going to end up sewing down this line right here, the fold, to keep that nice and flat. And we're going to sew once up against the card pockets over here. And then once we're finally ready to put the entire thing together, this will be sewn, the, that, that over flap there will be sewn down at the bottom, and it'll flip open like this so that you can get, from, get the cards from both sides of it. Um, I promise it'll all make sense when it's done. <laughs> so um, what we need to do is we need to put a little bit of glue on this thing and, uh, and, and fold it so that we can sew it. And then we're going to also start installing our zipper here so that we can get it sewn. That way, when I pause the camera next, I can sew up as much as possible so that we can come back. So I'm going to find the piece of cardboard that I had so that I could do my... There it is. Got a piece of cardboard here so I can do my gluing. Let me make it small enough for the desk here. And uh, what I'm going to do here, using our uh, contact cement, I'm just going to put a little bead of this stuff all the way around I'm going to stop about a, uh, a quarter to three-eighths of an inch from the end here on the side. I'll go all the way down this side right here, being very careful not to get my glue into the Tyvek or the holes. Um, if I do that, then it could glue my Tyvek down closed, and then I won't be able to get cards in it when it's uh, complete, and that would suck. So again, on this side, we're going to go down to about um, three-eighths of an inch from the end. All right. And then here's the tricky part. I want this glue right up against the, uh, the Tyvek, but I don't want it into the Tyvek. I need to leave about a quarter of an inch of space at the very bottom there that is not glued. Um, so you got to have good control of your glue brush. Um, a, a great trick Peter Main taught me is to take, when you have this glue brush, it, it, it originally was an inch, maybe even an inch and a quarter long in the brussel, bristles. Um, brussels? Bristles? Anyway, um, I just, he, had, he put it down on a cutting board and he just took a big knife and just pushed down on it and cut all those bristles off. And now it's nice and short and it's really easy to control. So uh, just a, a little heads up, if you use a brush with your glue, that's a really nice way to uh, be able to control it better. All right, so that is done. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to fold this thing, like I said, not quite in half because I don't. I want to leave that overhang there. All right, so I'm going to leave me about a quarter of an inch of, of room there. And I need to press that side down. It's going to be a little bit difficult to press down because all that Tyvek that's in there, but I got to do it. Okay. And then I'll press down my, my sides here. And then I'll set this piece aside for a moment while I get ready to install my zipper. Um, just like we've done on previous wallets, uh, we have a zipper. This one, I believe, is a 9-inch zipper, but that's fine. We're going to use it. Yep, this is a 9-inch zipper. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take it and I'm going to place the back end, the zipper stop back here, right at the end of the notch. And then the front of it, I need to unzip it to the point that the zipper top is, is inside the wallet here. All right. So then the front of it, I just want the zipper stop to be right up to the end of the, uh, the cut there. 
And when we go to sew all the way around this, it's gonna sew that into place and then I can just cut off the excess zipper back here. I buy a lot of nine inch zippers because I can, just like this, I can use them on smaller projects, but yet I have plenty of them in stock uh, for, for the bigger projects as well. Um, but I usually buy my zippers oversized for that reason. Um, so anyway, what I've got to do now though is I've got to take some double-sided tape and put on the edges of my, uh, my leather here. And um, that way the zipper will be stuck for sewing. So I'll take a piece of tape and I just want to put it right along the edge of the pocket or the, uh, the edge of the zipper hole here. Just like that. Um, I will go ahead and do just a little bit more up here because I need to hold that into place. All right, so I'm going to take the paper off the back of that. And there it is. Um, when I lay this on here, I want, once again, that zipper's open just enough that the front of it's gonna be all the way up to the end. The back of it's gonna be right at the back of my, my cut area there. And I want the zipper to be laying very straight and flat because I don't want it to be all wiggle waggle and snake-like inside the, inside the wallet. I want it to be nice and straight and professional. I'm just going to slowly press the leather down onto it. And there should be. So there it is. It's ready to sew up. Um, yeah. Uh, first thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to sew the zipper on it. And then I'm going to end up sewing it to the pocket that we marked the back of it like so, um, and then I'm gonna sew around the other three sides once it's folded closed. And again, when this is folded closed, the zipper will be on the side and not on the top, like that. It's gonna look really nice. So, um, again, we gotta sew the zipper on it first. That's that's the, the, the first thing we gotta do. So I'm gonna take get out my uh, punching board here. Got a hundred little cutting boards and punching boards down there. Put my tape away because it's in the way. I am going to, on this wallet, I normally do six or eight stitches per inch, but on this one I'm going to do six stitches per inch. A um, couple of reasons. One, there's just a ton of sewing that's going to go into this, and I, I will hand sew every bit of it. Um, but uh, another reason is I... Um, well, that really is about it. It's the time of how long it's going to take to sew all this up. I need to get this video made today because i got lots of other stuff going on this week. Um, I totally forgot to mark my stitch line. Let me do that right quick. I have a pair of wing dividers somewhere. This is what happens when you share your shop with your daughters. Let me pause this and find my wing dividers right quick. They're not where they're supposed to be. All right, sorry about that. So I'm gonna take my wing dividers and I'm just gonna measure me a little line, eighth of an inch or so away from the, uh, the super line. And uh, this is two to three ounce leather, so it's not gonna take much to sew this sucker together at all. I'm gonna leave that zipper end in place. I want to keep it, you know, almost zipped up as much as I can because I want the fronts of this to be sewn right into place where it's in a closed position. And there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark also my, uh, my stitch line on here. I'm going to go down both sides of it. And then it's going to be a little bit more tricky, again, because I've got this overlap here. So I want to sew 
um, I, I want to make sure when I sew down this line right here that I'm not so far out that I don't catch the other side. Um, so what I'm going to do is take my uh, template here. There's no marking or anything for the sew line I'm about to do, but if I put the template here, um, I'll be able to see that it's a straight line and it's on both pieces, and I'll just run me a little line there with a stylus. All right. So that line's good to go. And then I also will sew down this line right here. I need to mark it with my stylus. And again, I'm just going a, an eighth, maybe a tiny bit more, three sixteenths from the very edge there. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, when you look at this, this is what I would call the finished side. And then this is going to be the back side because when you open the wallet, when you open the wallet, it'll be sewn on there just like this. And you'll have to peel it back to see the back side. So I think the prettier stitching, the front of the stitching, should be on this side of it. So I'm going to go along and um, I realize that these are just pricking irons. Um, however, this is two to three ounces of leather. So I'm just going to go ahead and send them all the way through the leather and, uh, and make my stitch holes. And I'm going to do that all the way around this piece, and then I'm going to do it all the way around this piece over here. Uh, so I'm going to pause the, the, the video while I do all that, and then I'm going to hand sew them together using a saddle stitch. When I unpause the video, the, this zipper will be sewn on, this thing will be sewn closed, and we'll be ready to move on to the next part.